Hello there. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use FL Studio stock plugins to get really good sounding modern Afrobeat sounds that can even guarantee you a placement. If you knew, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and let's get started. All right. So our BPM is currently at 98 BPM, right? Yours could be 96, 100, 110, 115, doesn't matter, right? So just pick the tempo that you feel is good, for, that is good with you. And then you can select your drum you can use a drum loop right i have i mixed mine mine has a shaker loop and then mine also has a regular drum um pattern then this is how the drum bounce sounds all right so now let's go into what we're really here which is the building up melodies all right let's build up some really nice melodies then move on to chords and other parts all right so we're going to use, let's create a new pattern, right? Come right here, turn this on. This is our, we're going to have two lead melodies actually, and you'll see why shortly. So we're going to be using this direct wave um, sound. If you can't find your, simply come to your packs, then come to your instrument, and you see bass, guitar, keyboard, but this is from jazz, this is jazz guitar, right? And this is how it sounds. It sounds really good, right? So this is what we're going to be using to get our uh, Afro beats, my modern Afro beats. So let's play some melodies and see how this will sound. Let's see. This is what we're going to play. So let's record that in, all right? Right, let's open that up and quantize it and then let's see. Let's fix that up then. Sounds good already, right? So next, remember I said we're going to have two lead melodies. So we're going to turn this off and then open up a new pattern. And I have another it's also jazz guitar, still direct wave sound. So, um, we're going to do some a different bounce, more for the verse, all right? This is going to be for the verse now, something like... But we're going to shift it a bit. It's not going to play exactly with the drums, for example. That's, that's the bounce we're going to get from it. So now let's record it and see how it sounds. Two, ready, go. So you can see just shifting the bounce a little bit can change the feel of your sound or of your melodies, right? So you can always try to maybe play around. You don't always have to start from the exact line right here, right? You can always shift it a bit forward, a bit behind. Let's see how it sounds. Turn this off. Sounds good, right? So next we're going to build our pluck sound. Let's turn this off. Let's stick to building around our first main lead melody. This lead melody is going to be used in the, in the chorus. This is what we're going to have in the chorus, right? So let's see. Before we go further, I want to let you know that if you're still struggling with making better music, then what you need is guidance and proper mentoring. And I do offer that in my private one-on-one -on -one lessons. All you have to do is click the link in the description below. It says one-on-one student form. It's very easy form to fill. Fill it up and I'm going to get back to you promptly. So let's get back to today's tutorial, all right? Let's see. We're going to basically follow our chord progression throughout most of this track. Let's see. All right, let's go with that. We'll always keep it really simple, as simple as we can. Okay, we don't need to create anything crazy or complicated, at least for now. I missed my cue. Let's go again. All right, let's.
let's see how that sounds let's reduce the length you know the the, the length you allow for elements that have sustained in them can change the feel as well we don't want that we just want it to sound plucky and short just like that That's simple. Let's take it to a different octave and see how it sounds. So. I think I'll prefer it in the lower octave. I think it's fine here. All right, let's stick with it right there. So now let's play. Now it's time to us to play our real chord progression. Yeah, you don't always have to start with. Your main chords first, sometimes you may have a melody in your head and then you can derive your chords from there. And if you maybe already played a melody before you got your chords, you can easily derive your chords by just checking out. Most times your melody will give you an idea of how your chords are supposed to sound. Like you can see E, G, B, D, right? This is then E, then come here, D, F, A, C. So this is basically how your chords is going to play out. So let's say we use... Let's say we use this guy right here. So now let's record our chord progression. Let's try again. Let's see how it sounds. Open it up, quantize. And we're going to want everything to sustain, okay? We want everything to actually come out the way. Let's see. Then we're listening now. You can see it matches with the melody, right? So now let's move on to building out our counter melody. We're also going to keep it as simple as we can, right? Let's, let's go with that, all right? Let's try again. this and then stretch it out and then let's see how it sounds like all right so now we're going to play some strings or you don't always necessarily need to have strings in your in your um arrangement or in your song structure but recently i've been liking having strings in in my beats right Let's see. All right.
-hmm. right let's play that and i think i like that arrangement let's see all right so let's see how that sounds Let's take it to a high octave and see how it sounds. I think I like it because it adds more emotion to the song, right? But like I said, you don't always need to have um, uh, strings in your project, but I just like having it on mine, all right? So now let's see how we can add, let's say, a little bit of voice texture, vocal texture, or voice sampling. But the way everything I've been using so far, it's been from direct way from this instrument pack right here in FL Studio. It comes default when you get your FL Studio installed. So let's see. All right, let's let's get that in. All right, create a new pattern, then. Let's see. Let's see how that sounds. Let's try a high octave and see how it sounds. I think it's better in the low octave, don't you think so? Now let's play our bass line. Okay, we're going to keep our bass line really, really simple. All right? Let's keep our bass line so, so mm -hmm. simple. I'm going to follow our chord progression as well. And if you maybe are struggling playing bass, you can just copy your chord progression. Come to this pattern for your bass. Just paste it on an empty clip that you're not using, right? And then let's open up our bass line. Make sure your ghost note is on. And make sure, because you know your, your bass notes can go to lower notes all right so we'll, we'll create multiple instances and after creating multiple instances we're going to now open up our um business you can see now we can play around with within the gray lines okay that is the light gray the lighter gray lines so let's say let's say we start from here right Also like to do 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 something like that. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know if your bass notes are actually accurate, sometimes hearing them can be difficult. Just simply take them to a higher octave and then with this thing. So I want to... Yeah, I think that's it. 
Yeah, then just basically loops over. So I'm going to select this and then loop it across and see. Then we can bring it back down to the original octave it was on. Let's see. Let's even take it to a lower octave again. Then now let's see how it sounds with the beat, okay? And now we can take out our um our helper guides, right? And now it's time for us to spread it out a bit so you get the idea. Although I'm not going to do a full arrangement, okay? I'm only going to just show you why. I had the um, second melody layout right here. So let's assume this is the hook, okay? And then this is the verse. And then I'm going to just strip this down a bit. Just see. Yes, it's already sounding like a verse, right? So I'm just taking out all of these other elements. So when I play from here, Take out the shaker if I want. Then bring it back here. Then enters into the chorus again. So this was done strictly using stock plugins as for the melodies, right? So there's yeah, so much more you can do with FL Studio stock plugins. Do not allow plugins limit your creativity, right? Take out time to keep practicing, making more music, making more music, and definitely agree to come out with something really good.